Hello everyone, welcome to Kumari's Kids channel. Today's story is going to be about Simba the Lion King. The sun came up over the African plain, hot and brilliant just as it had, had done since the beginning of time. Today, the first rays of the morning sun fell on an entonishing side across the vast pride lands. Animals moved in great herds, heading for a single destination. Elephants plodded steadily, antelope leaped through the grass, giraffes looped, cheetahs raced, ants marched in a single line while huge flocks of flamingos winged across the sky they were all journeying to pride rock to celebrate the birth of king mufasa's son above the gathering on top of the pride rock rafiki the wise all mystic approached King Mufasa and Queen Sarabi. He cracked open a gourd, dipped his finger in the liquid, and made a special mark on the infant's forehead. Then he carried the cup to the edge of the rock and held it very high. A loud cheer rose from the plain. Elephants trumpeted, monkeys screeched, zebras, rhinos, and a host of other animals stamped their hooves. Then a hush fell over the gathering. Together, the animals of Mufasa's kingdom knelt before Simba, the new prince. Yet one family member did not attend the ceremony. Mufasa's brother, Scare, had spent the entire morning toying with the mouse. He was just about to eat it when Zazu, the king's majadoma, appeared. Stalled, Scare turned and, and the mouse scrambled away. Now, look, Zazu, you have made me lose my lunch. Scare complained. You'll lose more than that when the king gets through with you. But Scare wasn't listening. He was still hungry and Zazu was uh, was beginning to look pretty tasty. Scare pounced, but before he had time to eat Zazu, a wise commander dropped him. Scare released the bird. Why, if it isn't my big brother, he snurred. Sarabi and I didn't see you at the presentation of Simba, Mufasa said. Is anything wrong that was today? Scare said, oh, I feel simply awful. It must have slipped my mind. Well, as slippery as your mind is, you are the king's brother, Zazu reminded. Zazu also reminded Scare that he should have been the first in the line to congratulate his brother. I was first in the line until the little hairball was born, retorted Scare. That hairball is my son, Mufasa reminded him, and your future queen, king. I shall practice my crusty say, scare, said. Then he turned his back on them and walked away. The days passed and Simba grew from an infant into a cup. 
One morning before dawn, Mufasa led Simba to the top of Pride Rock as the sun edged over the horizon. Mufasa said, Simba, look, oh, everything the light touches is our kingdom. A king's time as ruler rises and falls like the sun. One day the sun will set up on my time here and will rise with you as the new king and this will be this will all be mine wow said simba looking forward but what about that shadowy place mufasa turned to his son that is beyond our borders you must never go there simba as they one wandered away from Pride Rock, Mufasa said to Simba, Everything you see exists, exists together in a delicate balance. As, a, as king, you will need to understand that balance and respect all creatures because we are all connected in the great circle of life. The young cub tried to listen, but a grasshopper caught his eyes and he chased after it. Just then, Zazu arrived with morning report. Sir, he addressed Mufasa. He addressed Mufasa. Ainas have crossed into the Pride Lands. Quickly, the king ordered his majidoma to take Simba home. Oh, Dad! Can't I come? Simba whined. No, son, his father replied, and he took off after the dark shapes in the distance. After Zazu made sure that Simba was home safely, the excited cub found Scare stunning him, sunning himself on a rock. Hey, Uncle Scare, Simba cried. My dad just showed me the whole kingdom and I'm going to rule it all. Scare squalled. Then slowly he began to smile. So your father showed you the whole kingdom? Did he? Did he show you what's beyond that rise at the border? No, said Simba. He said, I can't go there. And he's abs absolutely right, Scare replied. It's far too dangerous. Only the bravest of lions go there. An elephant graveyard is no place for a young prince. An elephant? What? said Simba. Wow! Oh dear! I have said too much, said Scare, grinding slyly. Just do me one favor, he added. Promise me that you will never visit that dreadful place. And remember, it's our little secret. As Care backed away, Simba stared at the distant spot on the horizon. He had no idea that Scare had cleverly set a trap to rid himself of the future king forever. Simba knew that he would be disobeying his father if he went into the elephant graveyard. But hadn't Uncle Scare said that only the bravest of lion dare venture there? Wouldn't Dad be proud of such a brave cup? thought Simba. Soon after Simba went in search of his best friend Nala, he was happy to find Nala with her mother, Sarafina and Queen Sarabi. Mom, he said to Sarabi, I just heard about this great place. Can Nala and I go? Where is this place, Simba? his mother asked. Oh! 
near the water hole, the cup fibbed. Uncle Scare had said it was a secret. All right, said Sarabi, as long as Sazu goes with you. Mm, no, not Sazu, thought Simba. He'll spoil everything. As Sazu led the way, Simba whispered to Nala, "We have go. We have. We have got to ditch him. We are not going to the water hole. We are going to an elephant graveyard." When Zazu looked back and saw them whispering, he said, "Just look at you two. Your parents will be thrilled. One day, you two are going to be married." It's a tradition. Marry her? Forget it," said Simba. "I can't marry her. Her? She's my best friend. And besides, when I'm king, I'll do just as I please." Zazu shook his head. With that attitude, you will be pretty pathetic, king. Simba laughed at Zazu. I can't wait to be king. The cub shouted, and he scampered away across the plains. Nala followed. Said, Nala followed, and the two of them darted in and out of herds and escaped from Zazu. It worked. We lost Zazu," said Simba, laughing. "Now we can we can look for the elephant graveyard." In the spirit of victory, Simba playfully leaped for Nala, but he was too quick for him and flipped him into his back. Together, they tumbled down a hill until they landed with a thud. Next to them was a huge elephant skull. This is it. We made it," said Simba. "Wow!" exclaimed Nala. "It it's really creepy." "Come on," said Simba. "Let's check it out." Before they could climb into the skull. Zazu caught up with them. With them, we are way beyond the boundary of the Pride Lands," he said. "And right now, we are we all are in a very real danger." "I laugh in the face of danger," said the brave lion cub. "Ha ha ha ha!" replied the elephant skull. Then, out of the skull, cavernous eye holes. Popped three slobbering hyenas. Well, well, Banzai, what have we got here? Said one hyena. I don't know, Zenzi answered. Another. What do you think, Id? Id. The third hyena just licked his lips and laughed. Burying their fangs in white grins. The hyenas crept toward the trespassers. They grabbed Zazu first. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Simba shouted. The hyenas dropped Zazu and raced after the cubs. When Zenji threatened Nala, Simba swiped his claws across the hyenas' nose. The hyenas raced after the cubs, who found themselves trapped inside the bones of an elephant's rib cage. Then the angry hyenas advanced toward Simba, their sharp teeth gleaming. A giant paw suddenly st- struck Zenzi, sending her and the other hyenas into a pile of bones. Not far from where Simba 
waited. A herd of wild bees gra grazed not far from the herd. Three hyenas waited too. They were waiting for a single, a, a signal from Scare. Zenzi saw him first. There he is. Let's go. The hyenas ran toward the wild bees, sensing danger and heard panicked and stamped in the gorge, straight toward Simba. Nearby, Mufasa and Zazu noticed the dust rising from the gorge. Mufasa, Mufasa, Scare yelled, appearing from behind a rock. Quick, stampede Simba's down there. With no thought for his own safety, the Lion King leaped into the gorge and snatched the cup out of the part of the deadly hooves. Mufasa jumped onto a rocky ledge and set Simba down. Suddenly, Mufasa felt the rocky wall crumble beneath his hin his hin paws. He fell back into the herd. Badly hurt, he tried to climb another cliff. Looking up, he saw Scare. Brother, help me, Mufasa pleaded. Scare leaned toward Mufasa and pulled him close. Long live the king, he whispered. Then let go. Mufasa lost his grip and disappeared beneath the mess of moving animals. Unaware of what Scare had done, Simba saw his father fall. When the wild bees were gone, the cup raised down into the dust-filled gorge. There Simba found his father. He nuzzled the motionless body, but the great lion king the great king lion was dead. Scare appeared beside Simba. What have you done? He said. He tried to save me, the cop answered. If it weren't for you, your father would have still be alive. Scare snarled. Run away, Simba. Run away and never return. Confused and heartbroken, Simba began to run. He did not see the hyenas join Scare or hear his uncle give the order to kill him. When Simba opened his eyes again, the burning sun and the vultures were gone. But a merkhead and a warthog were standing over him. You okay, kid? said the merkhead. You nearly died, said the warthog. We saved you. Thanks for your help, Simba replied. He stood on wobbly legs and started to leave. The market called after the shaggy cub. Where are, where are you from? It doesn't matter, Simba said quickly. Then he admitted, I did something terrible, but I don't want to talk about it. Then you are not, you then you are an outcast, cried the market. So are we. My name's Timon and this is Pumbaa. Take my advice, kid. 
you gotta put your past behind you no past no future no worries hakuna matata with nowhere else to go simba followed timon and pumba to their jungle home as timon handed simba some wriggling bugs to eat the market repeated this is the great life no rules no responsibilities and best of all no worries time passed in the carefree company of his new friends simba grew into a young lion one night while the three of them were gashing at the stars simba said someone once told me that the great kings of the past up there watching over us pumba and timon laughed who the have told ya yeah, a crazy thing like that said timon simba simba thinking thinking of his father was silent the next day as simba was wandering through the jungle he heard his friend shout for help simba hurried toward the sound pumba was caught beneath the trunk of a fallen tree and timon was trying to protect him from a hungry young lioness as she as she leaped simba threw himself forward and knocked the lioness aside for a moment they tussled then the lioness plan he pinned him to the ground and strad down at him simba he said assistantly nala he replied as the lions hugged timon cried what's your what's going on here simba laughed and introduced nala to his friends she smiled politely but she could not stop staring at simba finally she said everyone thinks you are dead they do simba said yes scare told us about the stampede what else did he tell you simba asked cautiously what else matters nala exclaimed you are alive and that means you are the king king cried timon and pumba in surprise excusing themselves simba and nala strolled into the jungle scare let the hyenas take over the pride lands nala said everything's destroyed there's no food no water simba if you don't do something soon everyone will starve i can't go back he insisted Nala did not understand why Simba refused to accept responsibility and help the pride. What's happened to you? He asked. She asked. You're not the Simba, I remember. You're right. I'm not, he said. Now, are you satisfied? Before he turned to leave, Simba added angrily, "Listen. You think you can just show up and tell me how to live my life?" you don't even know what i've been through nala called after him but simba ignored that night while the others slept simba sat on a rock and gazed up at the twinkling sky i don't care what anybody says he said aloud i won't go back what would it prove anyway it won't change anything you can't change the past the simba heard a strange sound somewhere in the jungle someone was chan- chanting in a sing song voice as if from nowhere the bent figure of an old baboon appeared who are you simba asked slightly annoyed 
The question is, who are you? said the baboon. Simba thought for a moment, then sighed. The old baboon said, I know your father. My father is dead, Simba replied. No, said the baboon, he is alive. I'll show him. I'll, I'll show him to you. Just follow old Rafiki. He knows the way. The old baboon led Simba to a clear, smooth pool. Look down there, Rafiki advised. In the pool, Simba saw only his reflection. Look harder, the baboon insisted. A breeze rippled the water. When the pool became still, Simba stared at the face of his father. You see, Rafiki said, he lives in you. Simba heard a voice call his, call his name and he looked up and saw the image of his father in the stars. Look inside yourself, Simba, said his father's image. You are more than what you have become. You must take your place in the circle of life. Remember who you are. You are my son and the one true king. Remember the vision faded. Simba remained alone thinking. The next morning, Nala, Timon and Pumba looked all over for Simba. Finally, Rafiki caught up with them. You won't find Simba here, the baboon said. The king has returned. Timon asked, what do you mean? He's gone back to challenge his uncle Nala exclaimed. Ahead of them, Simba moved swiftly toward Pride Rock. As he crossed over into the homeland, he saw ruin and devastation everywhere. For a moment, Simba hesitated. Then he felt a fresh wind and saw rain clouds gathering on the horizon. With renewed hope, he continued his journey. Soon Nala joined him, and as did Pumba, and even Timon. As they approached Pride Rock, they saw some hyenas. Pumba and Timon stayed behind to divert the pack. Nala went to find the lioness, while Simba forged on alone in search of his mother. Meanwhile, at Pride Rock, Scare re regained without shame. Where is your hunting party? He shrieked at Sarabi. There is no food, she replied. The herds have moved on. We have only one choice. We must leave Pride Rock. We are going, we are not going anywhere, he growled. Sarabi replied, then you are sentencing us to death. Then so be it. I'm the king and I make the rules. If you were half the king of Mufasa's, was Sarabi begin and Ragged, scare, struck her, and sh she felt. She fell, sorry. A tremendous roar echoed among the rocks, scare room, and saw great lion before him. Mufasa, he said, gasping. No, it can't be. You are dead. The weak, delirious scare backed away from the ghost. What do you want? He cried. Why are you here? Go away. Go, leave me alone. Although many years has passed, Sarabi still recognized 
her son. Simba, she said quietly, you are alive? Then Simba saw Scare crawling up Pride Rock. Simba dashed up the sleep face, dodging fire and smoke. This time he trapped Scare at the edge. Simba, you don't understand, Scare insisted. I didn't kill your father. It was the Hainas. They are the enemy. Now that you are back together, we can defeat them. Run away, Scare, Simba commanded, repeating the advice his uncle had once given him. Run away and never return. Scare started to slink away, but... Then he turned and lunged for Simba. Acting swiftly, Simba hurled Scare off the cliff. The sound of hungry Ainas drifted up from the gorge, revealing Scare's awful fate. As rain began to fall, Simba climbed up to the top pride rock. Then the clouds parted, revealing a star-filled sky. Simba roared trumpetingly, and all who heard him reacted with joy. Soon, under the rule of a wise, brave king, the pride lands flourished. The herds returned to Gash and food was plentiful once again. Soon the animals gathered once more to celebrate the birth of King's son. Simba and Nala watched proudly as Rafiki held their new cup high over Pride Rock. As the morning sun touched the African plain, Simba thought of something his father once told him a king king's time as a ruler and rise with you as the new king some day simba would pass on these same words to his own son continuing the unbroken circle of life thank you for watching i will see you guys in the next storytelling Bye.